Hi, it's Sonia and welcome back to my art channel. Um, today I've got a couple of process videos that I've, I've, they're from last week and I've stuck them one after the other. They're both in my abstract sketchbook um, and real time. So, and I thought I'd stick them together because I think sometimes you like a longer video if you're having, a, I guess, a longer drawing session. So I hope you've got your art stuff out and are experimenting, having fun doing what you want to do. Um, so this video is about 20 minutes. And yeah, and just to start with this, um, the first process was only like seven minutes. It was a pretty quick one. And I was really getting experimental. Um, that blue there is um, from, I had some old eyeshadows, an eyeshadow palette that uh, I, I wasn't going to use anymore. And I don't think you can really, I'm pretty sure you can't, people aren't going to probably go to a charity shop and buy secondhand eyeshadow, or maybe you do, I don't know. But I, was, I thought it's probably not appropriate to donate it. So then I was like, I kind of like the colours. They're a bit, um, there's, there's a blue and a yellow. I wonder if I could make eyeshadows into um, a painting medium for this sketchbook. And then I did look it up. And as with everything, there feel, it feels like there are YouTube videos or blogs on this sort of stuff. And apparently you can um, either mix uh, sort of powdered eyeshadows with, um, I haven't tried this one yet, but you can use gel medium, I think, or acrylic, some sort to make it more into a sort of acrylic. What I did though, um, there's also, there was um, a blog post, I think, about how you can mix it with, I can't find it on my desk, but um, you know with watercolour, here it is, what's it called? Oh, gum, gum, gum arabic, yeah. So I had this in my um, drawer for ages, so I was like, well, I might as well use that as well. So it's nice, it feels good to use up um, items sometimes as well and not just have them sitting around. And then the other thing with this eyeshadow palette, I don't think, I, I don't know if I bring it into shot, but I will at some point show it to you, is then the little pans. Once I've used the actual empty of eyeshadow, I thought I can then use the palette. It looks a lot like little silver trays resemble a lot the, um, you know, when people, artists are buying these um, ones online that are empty and then adding their own, making their own uh, watercolour palettes. So, you just hear me clicking, I'm just looking at it now. Um, so yeah, so that's what I thought I might do once I've used those up. So just an idea, I like to get creative with our art mediums. Like, I was, I'm always impressed when artists are playing with sticks and drawing with household items and just yeah just ways to get um playful and experimental in our sketchbooks and yeah i have no interest in the archival quality of this because sometimes i'm like with my husband you know i don't these sketchbooks they're just for having fun in they're not i'm not thinking about them as a legacy or anything like that it's just uh, for a process for me at the moment um but yeah but i to be honest with you i can't see why they wouldn't uh, these paintings wouldn't last for a period of time in them because obviously they're protected from the light and um yeah anyway so this was fun and I kind of liked the effect I was getting to be fair it's not totally an eyeshadow um composition there is uh some what am I using I think this is just watercolor maybe a leftover gouache that I had on that on a palette as well I was just using up some paint and I was really trying I think, again, sometimes experimenting with other mediums or stuff that you've got left over leads you to feel a bit more like you've got a bit more abundant or you don't have to be precious about it. So I was, I was more having fun with going bolder in my abstracts, less just slapping on, I think we're slapping on, slapping on some paint and just, uh, but still obviously choosing my shapes. Uh, letting myself go where I wanted to put colours and and patches. So that's how I went about this process, which has got another couple of minutes. Um, then, actually, oh, no, and then I had some, yeah, I could, oh, yeah, no, pencil. It looks like I, I did do this last week, so it's interesting watching it back. So then I've added some pencil. Um, but what I do also want to chat about as this is a longer video, is related actually um, to a comment I got, a, a comment I got on um, a previous video. I think that was my artist versus 
hobbyist video and like I'd sort of spoke about my personal and it was completely personal opinion on that subject and I believe someone um uh one of you wrote in and was saying about yeah like how you str how and I think this is really common and I've struggled with this question as well that feeling of um of copying like when sort of you want it's hot about original art copying versus do you know what i'm gonna have to quickly stop this while i go and search up the question hey so yeah, i'm back and i found it so um it was a really good point it was about um what do you think about copying someone else's style uh this is the question i'm reading out i want to eventually find my own but i'm not even close to that feel not even close to that stage at all I want to paint, but feel hesitant because, um, you know, it feels odd to copy someone else. However, um, yeah, not having, it's talking about not having one's own style, so feeling hesitant. And I feel like uh, this is something that um, we all, I think we all at some point in our sort of like art practices uh, struggle with because, yeah, because a lot of the time, um, what is it? I'm just trying to think what the major for me fault is. Okay, there's a few major things. Number one, um, personally, I am very uh, comfortable with copying other artists. I mean, let's take it back to basics. Copying, whatever, we, whatever you think about in life in general, when you're learning something, be it language, um, how to knit, how to, how to do practically anything, learning the process of studying learning involves um copying um handwriting like i remember copying uh, cursive down um and taking it back to art i think i've probably made that point clear but taking it back to art um I, that's how i learned to draw quite frankly i got books um when we were taught you know our teachers were like oh it's a good idea to copy from masters learn from you know, artists, the famous artists of the past, their techniques, they themselves went, you know, studied busts and um, well, obviously also copying, I guess. And um, yeah, I'd get books out of the library and they'd have, I'd copy um, famous like Toulouse-Lautrec drawings. I'd also follow those, you know, tutorials. So yeah, that's in essence, how I guess I learned the sort of craft bit of it. Um, the the difference is obviously that was my learning. I was like, if you're a student, I was never thinking at all about that being necessarily uh, my work to sell. In some ways, it always felt no, it felt like my work. It's still my copy. Um, and is it David Hockney? I think I read another book where he, with another chap, wrote a book about how how important it is to practice through. Um, copying other people's work so I think and um, personally or take inspiration from other people's work I don't I think it's do it don't feel um, I would never feel like bad about that I think and also sometimes if you're stumped for what to draw I, st I still go to like yeah I've got some books and I open them up and they're great you know the old masters like I think I've got a Van Dyke book. They're great for um, reference. And I'm, yeah, I'm copying someone else's work. Um, often though, I think as you get, the point is then with that, there comes a point where you've increased your skills, you feel more comfortable with drawing, with painting. And then like, um, I feel, then you start to get maybe, a, you feel sort of mastery of it. And you're like, oh, what do I do with this now? Maybe I can, I feel a bit more comfortable going on and um, uh, making, adding my own marks, uh, switching things up a bit. So, and a lot of artists, famous artists, I'm trying to remember their names because I watched documentaries about it, but oh gosh, who is it? Is it Michael, Michael Landon or something? Um, one of the guys, like, a lot of them actually do go back to, um, Jenny Savile, they'll obviously visit uh, older painters, but they will do it they will then switch it up, paint it in a new, these paintings in a new way. And I think they're even selling them um, because they've made it their work. But just to say, yeah, even, you know, fine, contem fine artists, contemporary artists, famous artists, they all 
use, uh, get inspiration, and in a, in, a, in a certain way are taking bits from other people's art. There's also that book that we all, uh, a lot of us know about, um, Austin Cleons, I think he wrote quite a few years ago now, Steal Like an Artist. That was a great book where he was talking about, you know, how artists are great, like we're sort of magpies, we're paying attention and often taking bits and bobs um, from other people, but then sort of mixing up and, you know, making our own work. And yeah, something that I feel quite strongly about as well um, and you can feel free, like, this is my opinion, but I'm actually starting to feel is we shouldn't worry so, so much about this because is anything at the moment, I mean, and this is a positive thing, the fact that a lot of the world now, if you think about it, probably making art in the old, old days, I'm, I've just been reading um, part of that book about the, the, um, the story of art without men, I think that's the title, I haven't got it in front of me, but Basically, you know, if you go back, only certain women, perhaps there wasn't much art because not many women would have access to art materials and being able to draw and paint. Um, and again, that's the same for a lot of societies. Like, But now that hopefully a lot of us are lucky and we can have freedom to art materials and are allowed, as it was such, to draw and paint, obviously there's going to be a huge volume, and we see that all the time, there's so much content out there on the internet there's so much art being produced and even more art that people are keeping secret and we don't even see um so there's in my mind sometimes i'm like is anything truly really um original are we not sort of you know like a, a lemon how many ways can a lemon be drawn but we can't no one's going to trademark as it were you can't say no one can draw a lemon because i've drawn it certain way but with a Posca pen especially if you then think about if you use a certain material certain materials when you draw something it's very hard to um, get a different outcome often pieces of work will look not the same every work is unique and it's done by you and your hand but there's nothing often unfortunately or fortunately uh, our work is going to look like other people's because it's, you know, especially if we're you drawing the same, the same, um, we've gone to the same beauty spot and we're drawing the same, uh, say, landmark as someone else. So, yeah, and I think actually the way to free yourself from that and the worry of that um, is actually, and I'm saying this like you're watching a video of me drawing, but actually is like in a way to avoid uh, uh, looking too much at um social media or too many other artists because then you can feel bombarded with their um creations and how they're doing things and it depends what you want if you if you find that inspiring and watching them is like okay i've seen this artist i'm gonna go and draw that's fantastic but yeah just try not to um yeah if you've learned something from them copy it but i i reckon actually a lot of the times when you try and copy someone sometimes it doesn't even look like that at all yeah I think it's just also what are you wanting to do now yeah it gets a bit more complicated if you're at the stage where you've been making lots of art and you're like or, or maybe you need to make you want to make a bit of um sell it make you know you, it'd be nice to have it make some money for you that's different because then you're into copyright and um obviously you have to be yeah you, you're not it's not cool to obviously copy another artist who says something and it is so similar but yeah the s my point is that um try not i think the problem is we can get so fearful that someone's going to go oh no you're copying that person or it looks like blurs and then you can think oh no it, what's the point um, my art's always going to look like other people's because it probably unfortunately all like my art looks like a lot of other people's too probably I mean I'm sure if I scanned the internet someone else is probably doing something very similar to this somewhere and that's great but this when I made this page here this was totally in my I was in my own headspace I was just having fun a lot of these shapes are I'm, I've got to be honest I've you know obviously see a lot of abstract art and um, I love looking at other people's artwork so I'm sure some of this stuff you know ideas are coming into my head but I love I love that whole um, idea of uh, mixing it up and for example I think Mark Ronson I'm sure I heard a TED talk or a podcast as the uh, producer Mark Ronson and he was talking about 
that whole thing of um yeah just taking you know samples and stuff like you think about a lot of djs they're taking uh original other people's songs and obviously if they then sell sell that or whatever they have to pay for the royalties and things but they're taking other people's riffs and parts of songs and then adding their own take to it and sometimes I've got to be honest I like I like the uh, remixes more than the originals so I would hate for people not to be allowed to do that or for that part of creativity for someone to say no you know no more for that um so yeah I, I, I feel there's more that if we can share um share our tips like I have no problem the whole po- point I'm sharing all my processes is I hope that maybe you're like hopefully cop- copying some stuff and um yeah because you know and if at home like you can if you think about it you can go and copy things at home and if you really like the outcome and I promise you I don't think when you do copy someone's it's going to be exactly the same so you'll have your piece of art because you've made it with your own hands and if you like it stick it up on your wall I mean at the end of the day, that's, I think, I think that's, if we're doing it for our personal pleasure, that's the uh, point. But yeah, and then I think through copying, um, you will get to this point where actually your marks become your own uh, because you you won't need to rely on that anymore because your confidence has grown. But I think it is a stage that a lot of us, and I, I definitely feel that I had to go through that stage when I was younger. Um, And I, as I say, I still now like to, especially when it comes to portraits and stuff, I need a reference to draw from. I can't just draw from my head and make things up. And here's another interesting thing I noticed as well on the internet that was um, really interesting to me is I was on um, Instagram and I was looking at like the explore page for sort of new artists and new things. I was like, oh, so there's this, like, you know, a really nice um, gouache artist I'm sort of, like, I'm online friends with. And I love her work. And it's very... I always thought it was very distinctive. That's because she paints with gouache and they have sort of beautiful, like, illustrations. And I was like... But then I looked on the Explore page. I was like, oh, that's um, my friend's... Uh, one of my friend's pieces. That's cool. Then I went and clicked on it. And it turned out it wasn't her. It was someone else. And I was like, wow. And then I went to this person's... Um, Instagram page and this person has exactly a similar painting style to another person but she's painting from her own references these are her own objects she's painting but it's just her style uh, of of gouache painting is very similar to this other person's now maybe they've influenced each other but like it's just interesting but it's still her own work like she could obviously if you're painting your own reference photos your own objects or even the other technique the other thing if you did want to sell stuff for prints is just completely um alter like mix and match references to make things your own and then yeah then it is your own work so that was her own work um so yeah that's my take on on um copying versus original art I don't I think we should we don't want to, the thing I hate is stifling creativity. I think once we start to get in our own heads, we don't want to inhibit ourselves. So I would say, uh, go out into the world, find things that inspire you, use them in your work, use them how you want to, call it copying, call it uh, mixing it up, um, however you want to do it. And then, yeah, just just follow follow your curiosity, follow follow your passions and just see where that takes you and yeah and I think I mean when I say there's no original I mean I mean that in a positive way I think if we are always I think for me the idea of making something original is so overwhelming I'd rather view it as actually it's unlikely that's going to I'm unlikely to achieve that Um, but what I can do is just stay in my own lane make the work I feel I want to make at the moment and I feel it's mine I mean I try and as I say I try not to go um and look sometimes I try and one of the things is not to look too much at other people's um art at this stage that I'm at because I'm actually trying to enjoying letting my own head lead me um into different places like with my playing around with still life and abstract work 
Um, but the reality is, and I, I'm sure I've, you know, it, my work will, will look like some other people's because at the end of the day, there's only so much you can do with a, you know, a green Crayola marker or here I'm using this fluorescent highlighter. But yes, uh, so just enjoy yourselves and yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments on copying, um, original art, creativity. That's cool. And we can always discuss these more in other videos. I'm going to say thank you at this point because this is nearly finished. I've nearly finished this one. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please do like and subscribe. I also do have a Patreon if you want to become a member and also like uh, show me appreciation and um, encourage me to make more of these rambly unedited videos. All right then, I'm going to say thank you very much and bye bye.